So, welcome everyone. It is 9.06 and we are going to begin uh, the, um, we are going to, to begin the meeting. Au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus Christ, seul chef souverain de l'Église, et par l'autorité qui m'a été conférée par le 43e Conseil Général, I hereby declare this meeting of the 43rd General Council to be in session for the work that may properly be brought before it to the glory of God. I'm going to ask, please, if everyone could enter their name into the chat box so that we can have a role for this meeting. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to ask if we could take some time at this point to reflect upon the fact that for thousands of years before the settlers, the newcomers arrived, there were people that lived on and walked on and celebrated the presence of God on this land from coast to coast to coast to coast. Various indigenous peoples and families and communities and nations. People indigenous to this land, people who were colonized by many of our ancestors and by many of us. Their relationship with the land has always been central, not just to their lives, but also to their spiritualities and has been since the beginning of time and continues today. In this meeting, we are gathered on various traditional territories and some of us on unceded territories of First Nations peoples, indigenous peoples. We need to recognize not only their stewardship of the land, but the stewardship of life that they've celebrated. And we also need to recognize that the colonization that has happened has caused brokenness. And that's something that we carry with us to this very day. And so when we recognize the territory that we are on, when we recognize the indigenous peoples of this place, we need to recognize that part of what we are doing is recommitting ourselves to working for and to living in right relations every single day. Every time we say these things, what we're doing is we're saying that we will do everything we can for right relations. And so I acknowledge that I am joining this meeting today from the traditional and the unceded territories of the Katsi peoples, the Kwikwetlam peoples, and the So Temut of the Shtolo peoples. I'd ask you to take a moment to acknowledge and to remember, and then to type into the chat box the names of the peoples upon whose lands you are speaking from today.
Thank you. Thank you. And again, I would ask that this be not simply a recitation that we do, but a call to right relations and a call to right action. May we live with respect and gratitude for the land and its peoples, and may we work hard for right relations with all its peoples as a church, as individual followers of Jesus Christ. Thank you. So we're going to begin our, our gathering time with a time of worship. And so I'd like to uh, turn over uh, the beginning of this uh, to, to uh, um, if we could bring up our worship slides, and I'd like to turn this over to Teresa to begin. Take a moment to set yourself where you are. Recognize that wherever you are, it is a place loved by God. And take a breath to celebrate the presence of God, creator of all. Take a moment to recognize that where you are is connected to where I am. You are connected with all the other commissioners, all the other people who have gathered for this meeting, and take a breath to celebrate the presence of God in Jesus. Take a moment to reach out past the walls of the room you are in, past the boundaries of your community, past the boundaries of this community, zooming together. Reach out into the world and take a breath to celebrate the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. Take a moment to be where you are with each other, with the world, and with God, and breathe. In the beginning, before there was a beginning at all, there was God and there was the void. God spoke to the void and with that word, there was light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I am with them. This is the light of Christ, alive in our lives, alive in the world. Please light your candle. Would you please pray with me our opening prayer? Spirit God, be our breath, be our song. Blow through us, bringing strength to move on. Our world seems inward, defensive, withdrawn. Spirit God, be our song. Patient God, 
soothe our pride, calm our fear, comfort us. When we know you are near, we grow more certain. Our vision is clear. Patient God, calm our fear. Loving God. Our voice. Be our voice, be our prayer, reaching out, joining hands as we share. We seek your guidance through friendship and care. Loving God, be our prayer. Go through us, bringing strength to move on. Through change, through challenge, we'll greet the new dawn. Spirit God, be our song. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 3. For the grace given by me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ and individually are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy uh, in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve Christ. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless. Don't curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Not be haughty, but give yourselves to humble tasks. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. These are the words of our ancestors in the spirit. May God speak to us in and through them. Folks, I chose this scripture this morning because I thought that it was uh, an, an interesting one for not only where, where Paul was at with the, the community that was in Rome, but where we are at in ourselves. Not in that we're in a place of, of conflict, a place of, of upset necessarily, but in a place of transition where people are in that sense of, okay, what's going to happen next? One of the things that I've been finding as I spend time with people uh, throughout the church is that while there's that fear, when they realize that the gifts that God has given them, the abundance of those gifts, the abilities that have been brought together in our communities of faith, when they realize what God has done there and the way that they are able to serve not just each other, but the wider community, the world, it begins to take away quite a bit of that fear. As we gather as commissioners, as people who are called to make decisions on behalf of the, the wider church in certain areas, 
I think it's really important that we too recognize the gifts that are gathered in this room, the gifts of 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 willingness of uh, to share our time, the the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of discernment, the gifts of questioning, the gifts of conversation, the gifts of action, the gifts of reflection, the gifts that each one of you carry. I am deeply thankful that you are bringing those gifts to this table, that you are together as the commissioners of the 43rd General Council, and that you have chosen to be part of this community at this time. May God bless us in the work that we have, not just today, but when we finish this meeting, the work that we have as commissioners, as ministers, and as disciples of Jesus in all the days to come. Amen and amen. And Mitchell, please. My friends in Christ, as we gather at Christ's table, a table that touches all places and all times, let us join together in a statement of our shared faith. We are not alone. We live in God's, in God's world. world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us, us and, others and others by the Spirit. Spirit. We, we trust, trust in, God. in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge, our judge. and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I would invite you to take out your bread, your cup, and just to take a moment, uh, the, the bread that I have in front of me is actually cornbread. And so the, the scent that's in it is actually quite wonderful with a, a sweetness that, that I'm going to be sharing from here. And I hope that you've had a chance to bring a little bit of bread and bring a little bit of juice. If you haven't, please know that you participate in this communion, whether or not you're able to have the physical, uh, the physical elements present. So I'd invite you to join with me in the liturgy that's printed on our screen. God is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, the God of all creation. It is right that we give thanks to you, God most holy. It is right that all of creation celebrates who you are in our lives. From the very beginning of the very beginning, before there was a beginning at all, you were there. And out of your love, all things came into being. Hallelujah. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the things that crawl across the land and walk on it, the things that squiggle underneath of it, and us, all things, all creatures created by you from the tiniest of quarks to the greatest of universal structures. Hallelujah, loving God. We, who are your people, gather together to celebrate your presence, not just here, but at Christ's table, a table that we believe is open to all of creation. We recognize that there are times that we have not lived 
in the way that your love would call us to. We recognize that there is brokenness in creation and inside of ourselves. And we recognize that sometimes we forget who we are and we forget who you are and we forget the relationship that we share. But over and over, you call us back. You call us back to the table. You call us back to relationship. You call us back to your love through prophets and priests, through grandmothers and grandfathers, through children and elders. You've called us back over and over and over again. And we give you thanks. When the time was right, you sent Jesus to be part of this creation to be one of us, to, to be born into this world, to be a tiny baby, to be a child, a youth, an adult. He laughed with those who laughed. He cried with those who cried. He was with your creation. On the night before he was taken to what would be his death, he gathered with his friends around a table like we gather around this table. And he did what he had done so many times before. He told the stories of faith and love. And he celebrated who you are. In one part of the meal, he took a loaf of bread. And he gave thanks to you, God, like we give thanks to you. Blessed are you, God most holy, who, who brings grain from the earth. And then he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. Each time you eat bread, remember me. When the meal was almost over, he took wine, juice, and he poured it into a cup. And again, he gave thanks to you, God. Blessed are you, God most holy, who brings fruit from the earth. And then he gave the cup to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and drink it. This is my promise in my life's blood that sin is forgiven. Each time you drink, remember me. <clears throat> and so, because we are at this table, we eat and we drink and we remember. I'd invite you, <coughs> excuse me, to join with me in the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples. And I would invite you to share it in the language that is yours, the language of your heart. For God is like our mother and God is like our father who art in heaven. Holy God, we ask that you would send your spirit upon not just this bread and this cup, but all of the bread and all of the cups, and upon each and every one of us, that they and we might truly be Jesus' body alive in the world, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. I'd invite you to partake communion as you have it.
I'd like to invite Mitchell to uh, share in our prayers uh, after communion. And Mitchell, I'm wondering if we could also pray for Samuel and his family at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time together in worship and in praise of you that we've tasted of the table of the hope and joy you promised for us and for all the earth. We remember those we know and who are precious to us, family members and friends close and far away. And we think of those who are grieving and hurting today, including Samuel, our brother, who's lost a family member recently. We ask that your healing and blessing might be in all of the hurting and broken parts of our world. That as we prepare ourselves to the tasks you've set before us as the general counsel for your United Church, that we might carry with us the promise that we have tasted of renewal and freedom uh, in the bread and the cup, that we might be a renewed people set forth for a renewed church, uh, doing what we can to take up your work in our time, God. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Mitchell. And thank you, Teresa, for, for also taking part in, in the leadership of worship. Our worship continues uh, at this time. Uh, our worship continues with the work that we have. And so I would invite you to make sure that you have uh, your documents open or in front of you in some way, shape or form. And we continue with our worship by, uh, by uh, going to GS10, the opening procedural motions. And I would call on Nora for those motions, please. And I believe you'll see this motion up on the screen uh, momentarily. There it is. Thank you, Shirley. Um, and everybody's had this in their package. This is the procedural motion that has you approve the agenda, uh, the corresponding members, the members of the business table, and, and so on. Um, so Shirley, scrolling through briefly, I'm not going to read it all to you, but I'm going to be moving this with Larry Doyle, as a member of the business table, as my seconder. So Nora has moved GS10, the opening procedural motion, and it has been seconded by Larry Doyle. Are there any questions or comments? Sure. Seeing none. I am going to ask that all those in favor, please indicate by clicking yes. All those opposed, by clicking no. And if you're abstaining, please simply do not click anything. If you wish your abstention recorded, please type it into the chat box. It looks like all of the votes are in, so I am going to declare the voting closed now. This motion carries. We're going to move on to GS11, the consent proposal. And Nora, I would turn to you for this motion, please. Thank you, moderator. And again, we'll be seeing the consent proposal, I believe, on the screen as well. Um, and remembering that this is uh, the business at this meeting is being done in things that can be done on consent. Uh, we're going to save the things that require the full learning and discussion and full decision making process for when the full body of uh, commissioners are together again in Calgary. Um, so what you have before you is approving minutes of previous online meetings, uh, moderators accountability report and mine and then the number of proposals before you. And let me just say a couple of things. First of all, um, it's been very good to receive comments and questions from different commissioners as you've been preparing for the meeting. Good to see that active engagement. Um, there were questions about the proposal relating to the National Indigenous Council, and I understand that they have been resolved as far as this proposal is concerned. Uh, the proposal is intended to give wide options for the National Indigenous Council 
um, to be able to, uh, and, and the communities of faith that are part of it, recognizing the different parts of the indigenous church have different perspectives on how they wish to relate to the regional councils. And th this leaves room to work that out. Uh, we respect that there's a new council in place for the indigenous church and they will need some time, but I have full faith that they will live into their work. Uh, they will hear the different perspectives and respect them in their processes. And in dealing with something like this on a consent basis, we're trying to respect the principle in the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples that uh, people should make, uh, indigenous uh, peoples should be enabled to make their own decisions about the things that relate to them. It's not so much for us to decide as simply to endorse the things that are coming from them and to leave them to work out within their community uh, the issues that, that they need to. I'm grateful to Murray Spears for uh, having asked about the wording on the proposal that will authorize a remit on a change of the basis of union about ministry personnel that makes the, this is what makes the language more fully gender inclusive. And as a result of Murray's inquiry, there's been a small change to that proposal to add one word. It previously referred to all genders and now it refers to all gender identities. Uh, Murray inquired, we did some further consultation and we also of course confirmed that with the mover and seconder of the proposal. Uh, so it's in your workbook now in, in that slightly modified form. And finally, moderator, I understand that one commissioner, uh, Nick Phillips, uh, he has signaled to me last evening his wish to request that proposal GS-12, the manual change related to executive minister membership, be removed from the consent agenda. So I think, moderator, that you will want to call on him uh, before we proceed uh, with the uh, consent motion and once again I'm moving the consent motion and uh, Larry Doyle is seconding it. Thank you very much. The motion is moved by Nora Sanders and seconded by Larry Doyle. Uh, I'm going to ask please uh, first Nick could, could you raise your hand just so it brings you to the top of the screen. Nick Phillips could you please raise your hand? He's raised it. Okay great. Uh, Nick, I recognize you. Uh, would you like to speak to removing uh, that uh, uh, from the consent proposal? Sure. Thank you, moderator. I'm Nick Phillips, Region 15. I would like to see GS-12 lifted from the consent proposals. I'm uncomfortable with the language of allowing membership across regions, whether that be executive ministers or ministry personnel. Are we are opening a risk to abuse of power across regions that may be a very small risk but nonetheless a risk. I understand the proposal has the intent of allowing executive ministers to make proposals to the regions they serve, much like how today we are looking at proposals put forward by the general secretary. But I also believe there are other avenues available to get proposals before the courts, such as regional committees or executives. I'd like to see GS-12 receive further scrutiny and discussion at the next general council before implementation. I believe there's better options than allowing membership across regions. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Nora, is there any response from General Secretary? Yeah, I can just give a few words of explanation, moderator. Thank you. Um, and this is was un, uh, expected to be just kind of a technical thing, but it's really helpful to know that people have scrutinized it and, and looked at it. So the role that the regional executive ministers play is very similar to what formerly a conference executive secretary played and similar in, in a sense to my role as well. Um, and in the previous structure, there was one uh, conference executive secretary, uh, one for each region. And now, as we know, each of the regional ministers serves two or three regions. Uh, the intent of this proposal was simply to uh, make the process of the meeting run a little bit more smoothly. Uh, of course, there are ways to get around it if you have a, a senior staff who isn't able to participate in the normal way that a, an executive minister or, uh, would be able to. Um, but it was intended simply to make it a little bit more uh, smooth in the operations uh, for each of the regions. Uh, and uh, each of the regions, of course, uh, is part of the staffing process, uh, it works directly with that uh, regional executive minister 
And uh, I, I think the hope was that this would allow the regional executive ministers to participate fully in the business of each of the regions they serve, not in any one more than the others. Um, so that was the intent of this. It's intended to be a technical thing, um, but I leave it to the, to the wisdom of this body whether you feel it's ready to proceed today or not. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just letting Nancy know that I have seen your hand and I will get to you in a moment. Uh, but uh, following the process that we just agreed upon, I need to ask the commissioners, do you wish to have, could I have the number please? Was it GS 12? Yes, uh, at, as requested, do you wish to have GS 12 lifted from the consent docket? If you wish to have it lifted, removed, uh, it will be discussed at the next general council meeting. Uh, all those in favor, please indicate by clicking yes. All those opposed, please indicate by clicking no. Excuse me, thank you. If you've not voted, please vote now. That vote is defeated. The motion is, or, or the, the request is defeated. It will remain in the consent mo motion. Thank you very much. So uh, I believe Nancy had her hand raised. Nancy Sutherland. Nancy, we recognize you if you'd like to speak. No, not at this time. Thank you very much. Uh, we've had a couple of requests in the chat box to have the results of the vote. It's my understanding that we don't actually give the results of the vote, simply whether or not the vote has carried or not. Um, this was a majority vote and the majority uh, decided to keep it in the, uh, in the, the proposal. Are there any other requests to remove? Uh, um, uh, uh, okay, just a moment, please. Nora, can you check that for me? We have a request uh, for a result of the vote. Uh, it wasn't requested to be a, a, a vote where, uh, I'm trying to think what we call it when each person has to stand up and say which way they vote a recorded vote. Um, uh, it would be like in a meeting where you'd see and in here you can't actually see. Um, uh, but frankly, this one uh, was soundly defeated. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it matters one way or the other. Uh, I didn't write down the numbers. Yeah, I, I, I did. Yeah, feel free to share them then. And then I so, can maybe offer a word in response to uh, one of the comments, but uh, go ahead. So uh, it was 90 opposed, 76 in favor. And I can just say, uh, just picking up on a comment in the chat room about a concern about an executive minister going rogue. Um, there are other ways to deal with that. Someone in that position uh, is supervised both by me and by their regional executive council. Um, so I, I, if that sort of thing would be a concern, it would be similar. If I went rogue, uh, there's the means to supervise me. And maybe I have gone rogue. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Are there any other items that we wish to lift from consent? Please indicate if you would like to have something lifted from consent by raising your virtual hand. I am not seeing any other requests. So uh, we're going to move on to the motion then. 
I'm going to call for the vote on the motion itself. All those in favor of GS 11 consent proposal, please indicate by clicking yes. All those opposed, please indicate by clicking no. If you wish to abstain, please type that into the chat box. Lorraine, the yes won't count in the chat box. You need to click the, um, the indicator in, in the chat, in the participant list, please. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'll, I'll watch for that then, thank you. Uh, that motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. Can I ask that the vote be cleared? So at this point, um, uh, we are going to move on with a video. Uh, we have, uh, th this past summer, the National Indigenous Spiritual Gathering met, and during that time, uh, members of the, uh, our church staff were able to take part in, uh, in videoing uh, many of the, the, the things that took part there. And so uh, a video has been pr produced for the Mission and Service Fund, and we'd like to share it with you as, as we prepare to come into uh, the moderators and the, the General Secretary's reports. Indigenous members of the United Church of Canada from across the country traveled to Rama First Nation for the National Indigenous Spiritual Gathering in August 2019. We came to honour the long history of Indigenous peoples' membership in the United Church and to take the next step in our journey towards self-determination. After the restructuring mandated at General Council 42, our 64 communities of faith in British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario and Quebec said that we needed to determine what our structures would be and how they would work. We crafted a vision of a self-determining Indigenous Church within the United Church of Canada. This vision is rooted in Indigenous knowledge and spirituality and framed by the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. At the spiritual gathering, we discuss what that vision will really mean in our communities of faith and what we hope for in our relationships within the United Church. These people here, these families, are still waiting for a place to worship. We are going to be heard and we're going to have some say in what happens in our United Church of Canada. May God bless you all. The Spiritual Gathering established a new National Indigenous Organization, a new council to lead it, and an Elders Council for ongoing guidance. This new structure will carry forward the legacy of the All Native Circle Conference, which has been the home of most United Church Indigenous communities of faith for the past 30 years. As we look toward the future, we honor all that has come before by passing the ANCC bundle on to the new Elders Council. We will also be led by new voices as two members of the Indigenous Ministries and Justice Youth and Young Adult Program were elected to council. Elders can learn from the youth. The youth can learn a lot from the elders. The youth delegates enrich the gathering with their presence and expertise. Cultural and land-based activities were an integral part of the program. So was their presence and role in decision making. They challenged us and helped envision a church that they want to be a part of, calling for the creation of a National Indigenous Youth Council. We are young, but we're tired of waiting. We need to get it done now. We are moving forward knowing that there is still much work ahead. We have planted for the future. Now is a time for nurture and growth. As long as the Indigenous Church 
is feeling incomplete or uh, whatever word you use as part of the United Church of Canada, then the United Church of Canada isn't quite whole. This is the voice that we've been asking for. And because we're only at first light, it's the body of work that's going to come later. The spiritual gathering was not just about the structure of the church. It was also a church gathering with many meaningful moments in ceremony and worship. Every morning began with a sunrise ceremony at the sacred fire. Students from the Sandy Soto Spiritual Center led worship to begin each day. It was also a time of community as we gathered together to share stories, songs and teachings. We also held our silent auction to raise funds for the Mission and Service Fund. This year, we raised almost $2,500. This is a tradition we are eager to share with the wider church. Why not try one of these in your region or community? Indigenous communities of faith and the National Indigenous Spiritual Gathering are supported by the Mission and Service Fund. Thank you very much. Uh, and if you're wondering why uh, Nora and I are, are, are smiling widely, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the silent, quote unquote, silent auction was not silent in the least. And it was, it was amazing. It, it was amazing. So uh, thank you very much for taking some time to, to uh, understand a little bit of what happened this summer. Uh, I'd like to turn uh, the meeting over to uh, to our past moderator, Jordan Cantwell, at this point in time, please. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, it's very good to be here. Um, I'm actually just uh, stepping into the chair so that our moderator can give his accountability report. So I'm going to turn it right back to you, Richard. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jordan. <laughs> So uh, my accountability report uh, was printed in your workbook, and I hope that you've had a chance to read it. Uh, I noticed a comment in the chat section uh, asking if we can work to make sure that both the moderator's accountability report and the general secretary's accountability report uh, is more widely circulated through the church because uh, there was a sense that it, it helped folks to understand what's going on. So we'll see what we can do around that. I, I think if you have a chance to read it through, it really does talk about my experiences in, as, as being moderator over the past year. And I can put it into uh, one very short word, amazing. Uh, I've had the chance not just to participate in gatherings like the National Indigenous Spiritual Gathering, uh, which uh, was a, a powerful, challenging, uh, um, uh, overwhelming time. But I've had the chance to participate with ecumenical partners, with, um, with uh, our, our siblings with whom we are in full communion uh, in both the United Church of Christ USA and in the um, Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada. As well, <coughs> in this first year, I've had the chance to travel and meet with mission partners and other folks when I was in the Philippines. Uh, and that time too was both wonderful and difficult. Uh, one of the things that happened while we were in the Philippines was we had the chance to listen to not only uh, human rights defenders in the Philippines, but also victims of human rights abuses in the Philippines. And that time was, uh, was quite painful to hear one of the things that was said quite clearly by, by uh, one, uh, one woman, uh, a grandmother, was uh, the statement, uh, 
when when she was asked by by one of our Kairos Canada partners, what is it? On lui a demandé par un des associés des partenaires de Kairos. On lui a demandé. Je m'excuse, mais mais. Uh, excuse me, I've got the, the translation going on in my ear. Je m'excuse, no, j'ai... Euh... Okay, merci beaucoup. <laughs> make it uh, uh, One of the, the, uh, the, the statements that was made by, the, uh, by, by one of the people was when, when she was asked, what is it you would like for us to bring back to Canada? What she said was, well, the first thing is, I want you to make sure that none of this ever happens there. Her first statement was a concern for the people of this land and this place. And then it was, and if you can talk with your politicians about talking to our politicians, that would be really helpful. It is really important that our um, various partners understand that we are standing with them and that we are not only standing but we are doing everything that we can to be in support of them and so uh, as you hear about these things uh, as you explore these things i hope that you'll share them with your congregations and communities of faith the one addition i'd like to make to my report is uh, a concern uh, I've had the chance to uh, attend uh, a variety of events across the United Church of Canada, gatherings of communities of faith, uh, gatherings that are in regions, regional gatherings. Uh, and I've also had the chance to simply pop up in, uh, in various congregations as I'm traveling around. Uh, as I'm driving or in the city on a Sunday, uh, I just kind of show up. And it's not to take part in worship. It's to sit in the congregation and to worship. Because one of the realities is, uh, as a minister, uh, and many of you will know this, we don't often get the chance to go and simply worship. Well, as moderator, I've got that chance right now. One of the things that I'm hearing is a great deal of cynicism about the life of the church. And that cynicism isn't really coming from people who are participating in the pews as much as it's coming from folks who are ministry personnel. I believe that we are carrying in us a great deal of fear about our future. And I think that we need to be working together to uh, explore where that fear is coming from and to work to support one another in that, not only institutionally through our structures, but as, as colleagues together. Uh, and I think I, I'm a bit concerned about it because uh, cynicism has the ability to uh, be a seed and uh, that seed can grow very, very quickly. Cynicism also, of, often talks to us about our own sense of brokenness. It often talks to us about our, uh, our sense of, uh, of being exhausted by things that are going on around us. So uh, I think it's important that we, we take the time when we're hearing this either coming from our own hearts or from our colleagues' hearts to step into that, to be with each other, to pray with one another, to support one another, and to really explore um, what that means and, and how, we can, how we can work to respond to it. Uh, I, am, uh, I would like to say uh, just two quick words of thanks. One of those is to the General Counsel Office staff. Uh, we are extremely well served by the, the people who, uh, who are in the general counsel office. And I mean, not only those who are at the office themselves, but also across the regions as well. Uh, we are, they, they are folks with a great deal of gift. And I, I know that I would not be able to do the ministry that I am doing without what they offer to me and to the wider church. I would also like to say thanks to the general counsel executive. We have a group of people who are, um, uh, the only phrase I can think of is just like chomping at the bit. The, just come on folks, we, we have some things to do. There's a ministry here, we gotta get into this. And they are putting their gifts and their abilities into that uh, with all of their hearts. And so I would like to say thank you at this time for their ministry. And I would finish by saying thank you to you as commissioners, for those of you who are lay folks and uh, for those of you who are ministry personnel, not just for what you're doing here, but for what you're doing in your communities of faith, in your regions and in your wider communities and what you're helping others to do as you do that ministry. 
it is truly making a difference in this world. And uh, when we look at our various social media streams, when we look at our news feeds and our newspapers, we know that the world needs um, that space of help as much as we need to be helped by and interacted with, with the world. So continue doing the ministry that we're doing. Hallelujah, amen. Back over to you, Jordan. All right, thank you very much, moderator. Now, friends, if you have um, comments, general comments or responses to the moderator's either written or verbal report, I encourage you to type those into the chat box. If you have specific questions that you would like the moderator to respond to, then please raise your hand and I will call on you and your mic will be empowered. And I'm hoping that if somebody raises their hand, their name will pop to the top of my participant list. See lots of comments in the chat box. Uh, Rose Hannah Gaskin has her hand up. We could have Rose's, Rose Hannah's mic on. Go ahead. There we go, I'm unmuted. Uh, grace and peace to you uh, all. Thank you uh, for this meeting. Um, I, I would just like to say to the moderator that um, I think he's on to something. Um, I think you're on to something, Richard. Um, I, I wouldn't have called it cynicism from where I sit, uh, but I definitely think there is uh, an emotional um, need, uh, certainly amongst the colleagues that I see. Uh, you know, I complained about presbytery for the last 22 years, and uh, I can't believe how much I am missing uh, the forced opportunity to get together monthly, bi-monthly, as the different conferences did it. Uh, it's very, very easy to find oneself, even in the midst of a city, uh, isolated and um, just doing the day-to-day -day work and never getting past that. So I know you're coming to Fredericton uh, on November 1st uh, to do a retreat with us and I'm looking forward to that but certainly that's behind uh, um, my intention around having a retreat with uh, the clergy who are able to get there uh, on November 1st. So thank you for um, picking up the clues. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question for the moderator? I'm not seeing any other hands. I'm seeing lots of comments in the, the chat and I encourage folks to, to read those. Thank you for all of them. I wonder if we might just take a, a moment now to offer words of prayer for our moderator. Compassionate and living God, we give you thanks for the ministry that Richard is offering among us and within and on behalf of our church. We pray that your spirit will continue to strengthen and bless him as he visits with folks across this country and around the world, our partners in various corners of the world. May May you open his ears and his heart to hear the, the joy, the cries, the calling from our partners, from our church. May you open his spirit to respond with your compassion, your love, and your understanding. May you open all of our hearts to receive and, and offer prayers for Richard, in this work that he does on our behalf. May you keep him grounded. May you keep him in touch with himself as he offers this ministry. May all of our prayers and our love surround him. May he know himself held by your grace, by our love, every moment of every day. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen.
Amen. I'm going to return the chair to you, moderator. Thank you very much, Jordan. And thank you, everyone. I will make sure that uh, I take a look at uh, at the comments that are in the chat box uh, and uh, and and see if there are things that we need to respond to out of that. I would like to turn to the general secretary, Nora Sanders, for uh, for her um, uh, for her report, please. Merci. Uh, C'est un plaisir d'offrir un rapport de mon travail et du bureau du Conseil général et d'utiliser la technologie qui nous permet une rencontre à distance. It's always a pleasure to have the opportunity to report to you and it's kind of exciting today to be able to meet in the way we are uh, with all of us at a distance, to have that kind of technology. You've had a full report from me. I'm just going to touch on a few things. And of course, when you have questions, they might be about what's in the report or what isn't in the report, uh, whether I've mentioned it today or not. Um, I want to start with, uh, in a way, the most difficult. I think uh, all of us uh, remember so clearly the way we ended uh, General Counsel last year and that important and uh, uh, challenging conversation where uh, many of us, I think, were taken aback by the stories of racism within our church. It's clear uh, from that and from the work uh, we've all been encountering since that we do not have the luxury of thinking that uh, racism is somewhere else, uh, not about us. Um, we have a desire to do better. We yearn to be that welcoming place we've always named us, uh, ourselves to be. Um, and I just wanted to mention a few of the things that have been uh, happening uh, to follow up on that encounter uh, since last year's General Council. The White Privilege Working Group has been working. They've had a fairly uh, limited mandate and uh, we've just had a conversation with them. I think that for the executive in November there will be a, a proposal for uh, continued mandate, but a broader, a stronger mandate for, the, for that work to continue. Um, we're working on a new harassment policy that will make it uh, be specifically including uh, racial uh, uh, harassment and we'll uh, have a process that's clearly laid out for people to know how to use it. We have a, uh, an amazing consultant who's doing some work with our human resources uh, people to develop training for staff. He's somebody that's worked for different educational institutions and other organizations and uh, we've also had some learning and many discussions amongst our management group and staff leaders and you'll be hearing a little later from Deborah Richards about the work of the executive but just to say that the executive has uh, named this as something that they want to make a difference on. Uh, not that it's going to be all fixed, we wish that were something instant, we know it isn't, but that they want to make a difference on this triennium and there's a small working group uh, dedicated to, to making that happen. Other strong themes from General Counsel, the rural and remote uh, priority, that's been something, and again it's in my report, but something that's been part of so many of our conversations and that, and uh, I was going to add to just as we think about what materials are useful, uh, publications and other kinds of things, is we often ask, is this something that would be useful to a, a small congregation with, without ministry or with part-time ministry, something like that. Um, of course, much of our time, if I can't even say most of our time since General Counsel has been really devoted to the work of implementing, bringing into being all the things that you approved as part of the changes in our church, the, the new three council model, the office of vocation, the financial model, uh, working with the new smaller executive, countless details, uh, consultations, collaborations. And I would say that that work is well on its way uh, and as all of you know, there's still lots, uh, we're still living into it and I know that's true in your places as well. Um, I'm just supremely grateful to our regional colleagues, uh, staff and elected who've made uh, so much change happen in the past however many months it is now 
yeah, I guess we're into the 10th month since uh, since January 1, but it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of good faith, and it's been a lot of uh, uh, thinking through the details. It's one thing to approve the bigger picture and another thing to actually make it happen. Um, and I think as we continue to work with it, we'll think of improvements and ways that it can be made better. And so the kinds of ideas that come out, I'm hoping that all this change will be an invitation to creativity, uh, to overcome that cynicism that the, the moderators mentioned. We all see it at times, but an invitation to, uh, yes, grieve the things that we've lost or that seem different that we liked before, but also imagine uh, how we might be in new ways and who we might include in new ways and, and all that. Um, now there are the big changes, of course, at General Council that you approved with, it was the work of the caretakers report, caretakers of the Indigenous Circle, and my work uh, in, since then has been really, I would describe it as accompanying uh, and supporting where I can the work of the National Indigenous Council. In a previous time, I might have had a role that looked more like guiding or directing or a more active role, uh, but we are working so hard to respect the principle of autonomy of decision making that's part of the, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. I do take a direct role in the uh, all parties table that includes the other churches, the government, the national indigenous organizations in following up on the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And it's partly to hold one another uh, to the commitment to make this work uh, uh, continue, not to not to have it lost. It's almost five years since that report was released and some of us are concerned that that's a lifespan that sometimes things get put on a shelf. And I think the work that our church is doing, and it's not just in our office, but so many of you across the country, is part of what's keeping that alive for Canadians. Uh, la table des ministères en français est en train de bâtir les liens avec les conseils, conseils régionaux. Uh, quatre alliances ont déjà été approuvées et sept sont en préparation. La table uh, the Minister en Fossa is establishing relationships with regional councils. Four tripartite covenants have already been approved and another seven are in preparation. And I have to say, I mean, that comes out of work that the previous executive uh, approved, uh, the ability to have those kinds of covenants in a three-way thing with region, with this office, and with the tab. And it's proceeded uh, with a level of uh, commitment uh, beyond what I uh, might have thought possible. So I'm, I'm really grateful and, and impressed with the way that work has, has proceeded forward. Um, and just to mention one other thing coming out of the last General Council, you approved the full communion agreement with the Disciples of Christ. And many of you will know that just uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving, uh, we were in Winnipeg for a wonderful celebration with the, the did I see United Church of Christ with the Disciples of Christ, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. We were already in full communion with United Church of Christ. They were in communication in communion with the Disciples of Christ, and now we're all in communion with each other. Uh, we're not part of the same church. We have our independent identities, but it opens the door to working and serving together and learning from one another in new ways. And we had a wonderful celebration at the Broadway Disciples Church in Winnipeg, which happens to be a joint congregation and uh, uh, wonderful food, fellowship, and uh, celebration about that. Planning uh, is underway for the 44th General Council under the leadership of Sue Broderick. It's going to be in Calgary July 20th to 25th, 2021. And Many of you will be commissioners, I, I expect, and there'll be some new people too. In naming that date, I realized that although I'm part of the planning, I will not actually be at the meeting. Uh, as you likely know, I have uh, advised my supervisory committee and then the executive of my wish to retire from this position in around about September of next year. So. Uh, 2021 and the process has already been created to identify my successor. I'm really confident that at this time in the life of our church there are several other 
wonderfully gifted people who could step into this role. And I wish the best for the uh, election committee that will have to make whatever difficult choice they have. And I also encourage each of you, if there's somebody you think of who should be applying, please encourage them to do that. And I, I'm going to be supporting whoever's chosen as my successor through that transition so that they can lift up their leadership in a new way. I, I'm very, very grateful for having had the opportunity to serve in this way. The amazing uh, people I've met across the church and, and so on, I, and I'm not going to go into that today because I'm still here till next September and still going to be busy and on the job. J'ai soumis un avis de ma retraite pour le mois de septembre prochain. Si vous connaissez quelqu'un de qualifié, encourage ces gens de postuler. And meanwhile, I'm honored to continue to work with the excellent uh, moderator that you chose at TC43 and the wonderful uh, executive and the amazing staff team that serve the church here in this office and across the country. It, it truly is a, an honor. So thank you for this opportunity to report to you as well as uh, thanks to those that stay in touch with me in between times when there's something on your mind. And now I'm available for questions about anything that I've talked about in this report or in the written report or if there's something I didn't report on that you want to ask about. Merci de m'avoir écouté. Merci aussi aux gens qui restent en contact avec moi. Je suis maintenant ouvert pour les questions ou les dis discussions. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Nora. Uh, so again, if there are general comments that you would like to make uh, as it relates to the General Secretary's report, I'd invite you to place those in the chat box. If there are specific questions that you would like to ask, I would invite you to raise your virtual hand and you'll be recognized. So uh, I need to check. Barry Rader, is your hand raised? I see a thumb up. I just want to make sure if that's a hand or not. It's not a hand. Okay, thank you very much. I do see Kenji Marui's hand raised. Uh, I recognize Kenji. Hi, thank you. Uh, yeah, Kenji Marui, uh, Antler River Watershed Region. Uh, pronouns he, him. Uh, thank you, Nora, for, um, for your report and for, uh, I guess, uh, raising again the, the issue of, of white privilege and, and that, that seminal moment at uh, GC43. Uh, that I think was so profound and important for the church to move forward. Um, I, I just want to, I guess, raise, uh, make the observation that the chat box uh, was quite active when the moderator challenged us on uh, church cynicism, that we were feeling quite convicted and, and, and perhaps um, um, fe uh, heeding that challenge. Uh, less activity about of just talking about white privilege again and racism within the church. And I recognize it's, it's a, uh, an uncomfortable topic, uh, uh, an uncomfortable truth that we need to face. But uh, that was just an observation as, as again, someone who is of a, a racialized identity, uh, noticing that um, it's, it, there's a good game that's talked about, but uh, when it comes to uh, moving beyond that, we're still very awkward and uncomfortable about how to do so. Uh, you mentioned expanding or extending the mandate of the White Privilege Working Group, and I would just uh, be glad to hear any um, further details or expansion on that. So uh, thanks, Kenji, for that and for the reminder that we all need. Uh, we don't actually have the proposal yet that the White Privilege Group has been working on, but I understand that it would be to give a, their initial mandate has been primarily about education and I think that they want to be looking at actually uh, uh, moving into having uh, programs delivered and the training delivered and that kind of thing um, and uh, and possibly uh, just to, uh, to support them a little bit more as far as meeting in person and that kind of thing. So 
I know there are going to be a number of things, uh, and partly I think it's a way too of just naming that this is an ongoing commitment. Um, and I know in in the conversation I had with Bill Smith this week, I mean part of the challenge is uh, in figuring out how to um, encourage congregations to want to engage. Uh, we have mandatory training for ministry personnel, and I think there's a there's a uh, direction we're heading to have uh, continuing education in that area, not just a one-stop thing. Um, but the other challenge is to is to make congregations uh, who may also may always, uh, as most of us have believed, well, we're not racist, we don't need this, to have the uh, self-insight to realize that actually we do, and we could benefit from it and we could uh, be transformed and play a more wonderful role in the world. Um, it's sometimes hard for people to uh, recognize that need within ourselves. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, Kenji. Are there any other questions for Nora? If so, please raise your virtual hand. Okay. Elaine, so, Elaine Kellogg, it says, oh, it says Elaine Kellogg has raised hand. Oh, okay. So, Elaine? Elaine Kellogg, if you'd like to speak, we can. Uh, I'd recognize you. We're wondering if it was showing as raised kind of an error. Sometimes I yeah, know for myself, I, sometimes I click on something by mistake. I've just gone through the participant list and I don't see her name anymore. So I'm concerned that she might have dropped off the screen, uh, off the, the call. Uh, so at this point, we'll, we'll continue on. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I would recognize Paul Douglas Walfel. Moderator. Um, members of the General Council, I cannot make a proposal as I'm not a member of the past General Council, but I would wish that we would place on record our thanks to Nora Sanders for her ministry in the church upon the receipt of the news that she plans to retire from the post and that we have that on record just to say thanks to her for her years of service um, as we receive the news of her impending retirement. If my calculation is correct, this may be the last general council meeting Nora will be having with us. It's important that we place on record this. I would wish somebody to move it and second it. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, and so I would, Paul has made a suggestion as a member of the General Council Executive. Uh, it has been, <laughs> oh boy, it's been moved by Nick Phillips and I would say seconded by Heather Leffler that we put on record our thanks uh, for the, the ministry that, uh, that uh, uh, Nora Sanders has done and continues to do until her retirement uh, in another year uh, for what she has shared with the church and, uh, and our thanks uh, for all that she has given, uh, not just as general secretary, but in all of her ministry. So it has been moved and seconded. Uh, uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Then I'd invite you to vote. All those in favor, please signify by, say, by clicking yes. Those opposed, by clicking no. If you'd like to abstain, please type that into the chat box. And I'm going to declare that vote closed and I would like it to be known that this is a unanimous uh, thanks. Thank you, Nora. Okay. So uh, if there aren't any other questions for the General Secretary, then I would like to ask if we could take a moment 
in prayer for and with her. Shall we pray? Holy God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for uh, Nora Sanders, for how we have been well served by her ministry uh, uh, and, and your love through her and continue to be well served by the gifts that were placed in this church in her. We pray for her and for the work that she does, for the work of, of uh, managing people and managing policies and helping us to be the church that you call us to be. We ask that you would pour your grace upon her in ways that help her in those moments of trying to figure out what we're going to do next, in those moments of, of, uh, of phone calls to respond to questions that she offers so much love and care in. We pray for your blessing on the decisions that she needs to be making in the days to come for the, the work that we're going to give her uh, in, in this meeting and in other meetings. And we ask that you would continue to give her a heart that discerns, that you would continue to hold her in her ministry, and that you would continue to help us to be people who both support, but also raise up our questions with her, because she is so amazing at being able to help us through all of those things. Bless her. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Nora. I would like to turn then uh, to, uh, oh yes, to Deborah Richards, the chair of the business committee for the general counsel executive and uh, uh, for uh, a report from, an update report from the general counsel executive, please. Thank you, moderator. Uh, I'm Deborah Richards, chair of the business planning committee of the general council executive and i'm a commissioner from the pacific mountain region as well as many of you read in the reports from the moderator and the general secretary the staff of the church office and regions and communities of faith have all been adjusting to the new structures and implementation um, that we had uh, in this new year after gc 43 and likewise, I think the smaller general council executive of 15 members, laypersons and order ministry, uh, plus the moderator, general secretary, and the, the past moderator has also been engaged in adjusting to roles in this smaller grouping that provides leadership to the whole church. Uh, we've had the opportunity in the fall of 2018 to meet a couple of times face to face, build community discuss governance and upcoming work and how we'd work together. And since our term began on January the 1st, we've met three times, twice in online meetings in January and September, and in person in April. And our next in-person meeting is going to be in November. The General Council Executive has adopted the pattern for this first year of meeting in person twice uh, with two conference calls or online meetings in between. And even in between those meetings, we're scheduled webinars about specific issues, primarily uh, learning pieces which support important upcoming discussions and decisions in our online meetings. And we propose to follow this pattern in 2020. As the General Secretary's report mentioned, the General Council Executive's discussions at our April retreat with the senior staff members from the church office and regional executive ministers was a great time for us to get together and really talk about uh, issues um, about how we would move forward and work together. And we confirm the words in the new creed, we are called to be the church, uh, will be the guiding theological principles for the work of the general council executive, this general council executive. And we're certainly encouraging communities of faith to see these five points in the creed as a basis for your mission and ministry 
and to look for new ways to express them in your ministries as your ministries evolve. Someone pointed out, I'm not sure if it was on our call in September, or if it was a business planning committee a few weeks ago, uh, that we are halfway through our triennium. And that seems hard to believe. Um, and uh, as we come to this, the end of our first year of working together uh, as an executive, um, and we are continuing to review and follow up on any of the business referred from the previous executive, and also to look at governance issues. Every now and then you find um, ways where you're going, okay, this, this wording was for a bigger executive. How do we deal with these things? Uh, and we're working through those. Our work moving forward uh, is our, one of the things that we're doing is prioritizing and engaging in focused work and leadership on addressing racism in the church and uh, through the work of a task group that started, as has been mentioned. And that task group was actually formed uh, just in September. And I know from email traffic that we're, they've already had a couple of conference calls. So it's active works that that is happening as we move forward. And also we are having those discussions about equity issues for persons regardless of abilities as well. And th those probably will be a lot of the focus of our meeting in November. We were all happy as members of the General Council Executive to participate in one or more of the inaugural regional meetings in May and June of this year. And that allowed us to listen and hear from all of you directly. Uh, we recognize, and I've seen also from some of the chat that we've had today, how challenging it is to communicate in the midst of change and in the new structures. And it's also an opportunity for us to think about new ways of communicating. As a general counsel executive, we found new ways to provide summaries of some of our key discussions in our meetings and we'll continue to do that moving forward as well. Uh, we've often, as part of our meetings, continued to keep some focused time to raise what we're hearing from the wider church through our connections and through, our, through the matters that you raised to our attention. So I'm gonna encourage all of our commissioners um, to continue to connect with us individually as a group, uh, as you see the need and to find ways to connect with us and to connect in new ways across the communities of faith. And we enter this last part of our, our year and a year and a half to the 44th General Council, continuing to live out our call to be the church. Um, and that's my report and I turn control to the moderator and certainly I'm open to questions. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I would ask please that if you have uh, uh, general comments that you would like to make, that you type them into the chat box. If there are specific questions that you would like to ask of the general counsel executive, uh, uh, specifically to, to Deborah, I would invite you to raise your virtual hand and you'll be recognized and your microphone will be open. not seeing any hands being raised. I've asked if, uh, if Andrea Allen uh, would, uh, would offer prayers uh, on, on, on behalf of the general counsel. So thank you very much, Deborah, for your report. And I'd ask that Andrea's mic be unmuted uh, and so she can offer prayers, please. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you for so many of your servants who are so in love with you, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, that they are willing to do whatever you ask of them. And we give you a special thanks for all those who have given their names and continue to do the work of the General Council Executive. 
We give praise and thanksgiving for the generosity of their spirits, for their varied gifts, their energy, their enthusiasm to continue to do this work, for their thoughtfulness, their reflective natures, and all that they offer in your name. Guide them, nurture them, and sustain them in the coming days, months, and years as they continue to serve in our church, doing our work alongside us. We give our thanks and our praise and pray that your spirit may always be with Richard, Jordan, Nora, Sharon, Katie, Deb, Hannah, Deborah, Tim, Janet, Teresa, Mitchell, Kathy, Samuel, Paul, Larry, Jane, and Arlise, and anyone who continues to support them in love and in prayer with our thanksgiving, with our joy, and with all of your heart in us. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, Nora, then I would turn to you for GS15 closing procedural motions. Okay, and thank you, moderator. And I believe Shirley will put that up on the screen. As everybody knows, at the end of each meeting, we have a closing motion just to make it clear we've closed uh, and to uh, authorize, give the appropriate authorities for work that needs to be done in the meantime. And so you now have that on your screen. Uh, oh, it looks like it's giving the general secretary a lot of power again. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I hope that's okay with everybody. Um, here's the closing motion, preparation of remits, authority for changes to the manual minutes and adjournment. And I so move, and I believe Larry is seconding this once again as a member of the business table, Larry Doyle. So it has been uh, GS15 closing procedural motion has been moved by Nora Sanders and seconded by Larry Doyle. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I hope that's okay with everybody. Um, here's the closing motion, preparation of remit. Authority. I get to hear myself twice. Hey. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the mo okay. The, the motion has been presented. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Please raise your virtual hand if you wish to be recognized. Seeing none, I would ask for uh, a vote. All those in favor of GS15 closing procedural motion, please indicate by clicking yes. All those opposed, please indicate by clicking no. And if you wish to abstain and have it recorded, please put that into the chat box. That motion. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, Nora, I would uh, turn to you uh, for courtesies, please. Well, moderator, just to give my thanks, of course, to you for excellent chairing of a technological meeting, to all of our staff who are here, uh, Jamie, Mary, Stephanie, Shirley, Sue, Diane, and Cynthia. Uh, Shannon is at a distance uh, as part of the business table. To Larry for coming into Toronto to be at the business table today. And for Deborah Richards and all on the, on the business planning for the planning of this meeting. Um, it's uh, a lot of fun. It's amazing to be able to do this. And a huge thank you to everybody uh, for everybody present for the technological skills that you've either brought to this meeting or learned in order to take part in this meeting. It's very impressive to me. Thank you. And I would like to add to that uh, um, how uh, thankful I am uh, that everyone worked together using this, this new platform. I know it's difficult when we do that, and, and I really appreciate uh, you, you made my, my convening of this meeting, my, my facilitating of it very, very easy. So thank you very much. If you and have- And I should have mentioned the worship leadership as well, which has been, I think that's what knits a meeting like this together. So. Uh, to Teresa, to uh, uh, Mitchell. Mitchell, yes. Uh, anyway, and you, Richard, and <clears throat> are we going to hear from Paul as well? So anyway, yes. for all that uh, worship leadership, it's been wonderful as well. Thank you. 
thank you. Uh, the one thing that I would ask is that if you have comments or concerns ab specifically about the platform, uh, I would ask that you either put them in the chat box or you let uh, us know probably as much as Shirley's not going to be happy uh, with me saying this, probably by sending them uh, your, your comments to Shirley Welch uh, at the General Counsel Office. <laughs> yeah, I bet she just blanched. Sorry. <laughs> and she knows who to pass them on to, so it's right. good. <laughs> so uh, I would like to uh, turn to Paul Douglas Walfel for our, uh, our, our prayers before we, we leave. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks for this opportunity for us to meet in this time and in this way. And we bring before you every community of faith in this United Church of Canada. We bring before you the concerns of each community of faith. We bring before you the issues that they face as they continue to reach out, to proclaim and celebrate your presence in this land. We ask that you will provide for each community of faith the gifts needed to do the work that you have called them to. This month, we acknowledge as Clergy Appreciation Month. And so, Holy One, we bring before you all our ministry personnel, whether they be in active service or they have retired. Again, we ask that you will strengthen them. We ask that you'll be with their families and those who offer immediate support to them. We pray that you will stir up the gifts that you have placed in them to do ministry and help them to be faithful in carrying out the call that you have placed on their lives. We give you thanks for all who hold positions of leadership in our church, whether that leadership is at the general council office or regional councils or in our communities of faith. We remember in particular Richard, our moderator, and Nora, our general secretary, and we give you thanks for the work they do, and we ask that you will surround them with love, and that you remind them that they are not alone, even as they work for us in your name. Send us forth to do your work and to continue to uphold the witness that you have called us to. Remind us as we go of who we are, that we are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified our judge and our hope. Send us forth and remind us that in life, in death, in life beyond death, we are not alone. You are with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Paul. And so, I would invite you to just take a moment and to reflect that the light goes with us. And that even as we extinguish the candle, the light continues just changed in our hearts and in our lives and in the smoke that rises. Not just today, but always. Go in peace, folks. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>